Hi, I'm Bev Eason Nelson. <laughs> Father Richard and I have lots of history dating back to one of our previous pastors here at St. Charles, Father Jim Keeley. The last few years of Father Richard's life have been very difficult for him, as well as many of us. So I would like to share a few stories that might bring a smile to your lips and hope to all of us. When he moved into the rectory with his furniture, he had a couch, and we did everything we could to get that couch where he wanted it. You know, he was very precise. Finally, I said, Richard, this ain't going to work. We put it back in the garage the following week. We hired our handyman. He cut a hole in the closet, and we brought the couch in that way. And I said, Richard, I love you dearly, but whenever you leave, that couch is going to stay. <laughs> At a luncheon, uh, he took, he, we used to go out every once in a while, the staff, and we were on our way, and after a while, he would get bored. You know, he just had to do something. So. He said, we're going to take the scenic route back from our luncheon. And so here, the staff of us, were all shoved in the car together, and we're going along. And they had, you know, the little slow-down bumps? And he reaches over, and he says to all of us, how many of you know the difference between a hump and a bump? <laughs> the car went a dead silence, and all the way back to the rectory, nobody said anything. <laughs> yeah. What I loved whenever we'd have him over for dinner not only did he tell you who he wanted to come or who he didn't want to come, he would also tell you what he wanted to eat or what he didn't want to eat, you know. But he loved to discuss politics. I guess discuss would be a nice word, especially with Father Bob and my husband. Of course, as Bob mentioned, he loved old movies and his favorite was Casablanca. And he loved big band music and his favorite was, one of his favorites was Glenn Miller. As secretary of St. Charles for many years, I had a lot of asterisks that, after my job. And one of them was <laughs> including to help him update his clothes. He didn't understand why that every once in a while he needed to get a new sweater or whatever. So he and I would go shopping together, and that's another experience. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes whenever he had surgery, he would say to me, you're on. And away we'd go and I'd take him to surgery. One of the funniest things that happened, though, he said, um, go downstairs and they'll let you know when I'm ready. And I'm sitting down there reading my book and I hear this, would Mrs. McCafferty come to the third floor? <laughs> so I said, after about the third call, I said, that must be me. And so... I went upstairs, and there he was grinning. He said, they paged you, huh? And I said, yeah. <laughs> um, I also got to take him and the cats to the vet. And one day, the, he introduced me to her, and she said, oh, are you his chauffeur? <laughs> and I said, on top of many things, uh, that I can be, you know. So he, she laughed. She thought that was funny. He was a great journalistic teacher, and he loved, of course, he loved to be right. That, that's, a, that's a given, right? But, you know, I think there are other things that people forget. He edited all the church bulletins each week. You know, he would correct the grammar or whatever, whatever made it right. For me, personally, he corrected my Christmas letter, and he said, you're going to owe me for the rest of your life, Bev, let me tell you. <laughs> But his homilies were just awesome, and they always gave you something to think about, something from the heart. He was many, many things to me and my family during some of a, a lot of sorrow in my life and a lot of happiness. But most of all, he was a dear friend. And so I thank you, Father Richard, for all your memories. Bev? Yes. Could you tell the postman story? <laughs> You know what? I almost wore Mel's bathrobe today because I thought that would be an appropriate thing up here. Nothing's inappropriate for Richard. <laughs> for many of you, maybe you've heard this story before. If you haven't, hang in there, okay? Like I said, there were many asterisks to my job. And um, the main sprinkler system in the back went out. And so I was doing the watering on top of many other things. And so I had the timer on, and every 15 or 20 minutes, I'd go out and move the hose. And 
I don't know about most of you, but I've always learned to grab the hose like this until you get where you want and then let it go, right? So I'm out there and I'm getting ready to put the hose down and here's Richard, barely, come here right now. So I turned around to see, I thought it was an emergency. And as I did, the hose went and I am soaking wet. And I said, okay, Richard, now we have a little problem here. I don't live too far from here. I can go home and change my clothes. And he says, no, you're not going anywhere. He said, come in the back. So he said, here's my bathrobe. Put your clothes in the dryer. So I put his bathrobe on, put my clothes in the dryer. And I said, Richard, um, if anybody comes in through the front door, you're going to have to take care of it. So, because I'm sitting in the back in his bathroom. So we are a very friendly community, and Steve, our postman, I always used to say, Steve, if you can't find me, just roam around and start hollering. And so he had some postage due, and Steve came down the hallway, and he's yelling, Bev, Bev. And as I get up, Forgetting that I got the bathrobe on, I step out the door and Steve the postman says, It's okay, Bev, you don't have to explain anything. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I said, But Steve, I want to explain. He said, No, you don't have to, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, my clothes got dried, I put them back on, I gave Father Richard back his bathrobe, and he said, Aren't you going to wash it before you give it back? <laughs>